Speaking of the Hawks, where do they go from here? They got a problem. I mean, what do you do? Drew Locke's not your starting quarterback, and you may as well have a billboard in front of your facility. We're going to be looking at a quarterback in round one of the draft. Go ahead and leapfrog us. I don't know what they do. And, Chris, I won't be surprised if they get in the Deshaun Watson conversation. They got all these extra trade assets now. Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't it make sense that they would jump right in to Deshaun Watson immediately? We're going to, I assume, talk about Watson coming up later in the program and how he's moving toward potential resolution of his criminal cases. But if you're Pete Carroll now, you got all this stuff, you become what the Broncos were as of yesterday. You're looking around. Yeah. You're looking to see what's out there. You're, you, you've got the potential to go get yourself a veteran quarterback. Who, I'd rather have a veteran quarterback walk through the front door of the facility to replace Russell Wilson than a rookie. It's too much pressure on a rookie. I would not advocate using a first-round pick on a quarterback. That's a disaster waiting to happen mm-hmm. following Russell Wilson. I'd say go get Deshaun Watson if, uh, if they're comfortable with the legal situation and the allegations and everything else surrounding that. I'll be interested to see what they do. I really will. I mean, I hear what you're saying. I do. I get that. But I also look at them and go, they're different than the Broncos because the Broncos are one of those teams, Mike, you know, we've talked about this a lot. We look at them and go, they're kind of ready. Like, they're really damn close. They just need the quarterback. The Seahawks, I sit here and raise my hand and go, no, negative Ghost Rider. They're not ready. They're not ready in a lot of areas. And they got questions throughout their roster. So what do they want to do? Do they want to trade all these new assets they got away and got a quarterback and go, okay, wait, we got the quarterback now, but, oh, crap, we still don't got an offensive line. Oh, crap, we still don't have a defensive lineman that anybody in America knows their name of. Oh, crap, we still don't have a corner that anybody knows of in America. Like, that, that to me would be their problem. And I would think, hey, this is a team that – built itself on drafting the rookie quarterback or at least getting a guy that's of value and then trying to build the roster. I I expect them to do that, Mike. I I mean, again, I've got no inside knowledge here, but I I feel like they're going to try to, like, history repeat itself, find a value, you know, maybe low-level starter. Maybe they draft a quarterback they like. There's not going to be pressure on it. But I think more of the focus will be building the football team because you look at it, it just there's there's questions across the roster everywhere. I mean, almost every position on the team, other than the two wide receivers, you go and, and the linebackers, you know, with Wagner and, and Wagner, he's still a free agent. They got Jordan Brooks. They got they got so many questions. I just don't think they'll do that. I don't. Yeah, they whacked Bobby Wagner yesterday. That's so right. They have no one yep. left from their Super Bowl 48 Crazy. championship team, a game they won against, against the, the Broncos. Broncos. <laughs> so, it is amazing. I mean, it really is, it really is yeah. crazy yeah. how things have fallen together for the Broncos and are falling apart for the Seahawks. They have a long way to go. And they were able fairly quickly to put a championship-caliber team together when Pete Carroll and John Schneider arrived in 2010. By year three... They had the pieces in place, and by year four, they were a Super Bowl championship team. Now they're starting over again. Now they're typically drafting low in round one, which is one of the reasons why they're not getting the best of the best players. Look back to 2010 when they had two picks in the top half. They get Russell Okung and Earl Thomas. Then they start drafting later and later. I remember Bruce Irvin was a surprise as the 15th overall pick in 2012. My God, it's been 10 years since Bruce Irvin was drafted. Isn't that crazy? Holy crap, we're getting old. Yeah, but but in but in well, I've already been old. You're the one who's getting old. You're an old uh, timer. But in, <laughs> in 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 more recent years, yeah, swings and misses for the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, and and the Jamal Adams trade that resulted in two first round picks being sent to the New York Jets. So uh, it, it's a challenge. It's yeah, a we'll challenge. see what they do with them. Like you said, we'll see what they do with them because they built the dynasty off of great picks, like you like you mentioned. Mid-round picks, Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman, Michael. I mean, they got Michael Bennett in free agency. Excuse me, but all these guys, all those guys, for the most part, that team was full, full of third and fourth round like superstars. And then it's faltered the last few years to, to what you're saying. You're right; they haven't killed it in the draft by any stretch of the imagination. You know, you know, Pete got in my ear and said, "Yeah, maybe they reached on some of those guys. Yeah, they definitely took some guys that." Maybe we're off the radar a little bit for most teams as far as when they picked them. They were going to be a little farther down. They liked them. They went with it. Didn't work out. This is this is going to be a big one now. We're all going to be looking to go. Wait, they just traded Russell Wilson away. 
what the hell are they going to do with all these damn picks, and is it really going to help their football team? Yeah, big-time pressure on Schneider and, and Pete Carroll now. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.